Well, I was born into the industry. My my grandparents actually took over a dealership with my grandfather's sister in 1937. And my wife and I opened our own dealership in 1989 when my parents decided to retire. Um, and then we got into directing RV shows. And then I got into writing and speaking. So I, I, I've known nothing else but the RV industry my whole life. So anytime we had a spring break time or anything, we, we'd take a travel trailer. We, we purchased our own. It wasn't a year or two after we were married. We're now on our fifth travel trailer. Um, when our kids were old enough, that was like six months, they started camping with us. Uh, so they grew up in it. So we started doing that and that's where we just kind of discovered, well, there wasn't always campgrounds where we wanted them to be or we didn't want to deal with the, the, the crowdedness. And, and we started doing the boondocking thing where we just camp on public land. When we did run into heat problems, we typically seek out an RV park. Cause I chose not to carry a big heavy generator to run the air conditioner. Typically it has to be a 3000 watt unit. It would weigh a hundred pounds. Not something I want to you know, pull in and out of the storage area. When the um, soft start came along and I realized, hey, you can run this, your air conditioner on a little as a 2000 watt generator. Uh, it's like, I have room for that. That, you know, a Honda 2200 weighs 59 pounds. I had been running our previous gen, which was only a thousand watt. I tucked it between our, between our propane tanks in the front of the trailer and strapped it down there. So it was always there. Didn't need to unload, unload. It wasn't in the way. Uh, that unit weighed 29 pounds. I thought, well, can I get a 2200 watt Honda in the same spot? I measured that. Sure enough, I could. Uh, so once the, the soft start was added, now we could run air conditioner virtually wherever we wanted. Most people can relate to this when they've, we've towed their RV over a high mountain pass. As you get higher, internal combustion engines get less efficient because there's less oxygen in the burn. Roughly lose about 5% efficiency for every thousand feet you gain. So as I mentioned the last time, we were at 7,000 feet camping in the mountains of Idaho. Right there, my generator is 30% less efficient than normally. So instead of surging to 2,200 watts, I have to do the math, it was probably putting out 1,400 watts. Probably at rated capacity, which is 2,000, you take 35% of that, it's probably down around 12 or 1,300 watts. So I still able to run the air conditioner in high altitudes with a small generator, which I didn't realize till I got home and told your dad, wow, we, we'd had gotten marginal at 6,000, 6,500 feet in past vacations for either turn off the refrigerator off electric to save that power to run the air conditioner or uh, other things in the RV. This time I just went out and started the generator and turned the air conditioner, air conditioner on without thinking about it. And only later realizing, hey, we didn't have any issues at high, high, even a higher altitude than we've had in the past. Um, so it's readily available when we need it. Uh, we don't get the big converter or clunk from the compressor it picks on. And we visited friends or mooch docking as people call it. I can now run my air conditioner on a 15 amp circuit, a regular household circuit, if we're plugged in at their home. So again, before you need a heavier circuit to get the air to kick over. So it's allowed us to do much more. Now that we're vacationing with our friends here in the Northwest, we again typically camp in the mountains, but you just don't know when it's gonna get that warm. Uh, so it allows us to have air conditioning when you need it even at higher altitudes, uh, which, is, which is good. When, we, when you need it, you need it.